Hello, this is Chris Biggs. He's normally your host for Get Fact, but he has lost his voice. He says it's due to some sort of virus, but we know it's from putting pennies in his mouth, pennies he finds on the street. Brother, Anyways, every week on Get Fact, we pick a topic and jam as many facts as we can into uh, a short five minutes on that topic. This week's topic is why you shouldn't put street pennies in your mouth. Just kidding, it's eclipses. All right, let's start with five eclipse facts. Chris didn't know, not that that's shocking. Chris not knowing things, I mean. There are four types of solar eclipses. First is an annular eclipse. That's when the moon covers most of the sun's center. Side note, never look at the center of a moon. Never. Uh, then we got partial eclipses. Obviously, that's when only a part of the sun is obscured by the moon. We also have hybrid eclipses. They are rare and can appear as a total or annular eclipse along different sections of their paths. And the final type of eclipse is when the moon completely covers the sun, and those are called... Total eclipse of the heart. Well played, good sir. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of you, you know that. Have you heard of Bailey's Beads? No, 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 it's not the finale from the headliner at your local gentleman's establishment. It's what can happen during a total solar eclipse right before and after totality. The rugged lunar landscape allows beads of sunlight to shine through. This phenomenon is known as Bailey's beads because it's named after Francis Bailey, who first described them. Now let's discuss corona visibility. During a total solar eclipse, the sun's corona or its outer atmosphere becomes visible. The corona is usually hidden by the brightness of the sun's surface, kind of like your face, Chris. No one says it's handsome because it's outshined by your glowing personality. Also, during a total solar eclipse, there is a noticeable drop in temperature in the area of totality, obviously due to the sun's light being blocked. The same thing happens when Chris's Aunt Janice is within 500 meters. Because that b is frigid. <laughs> and finally, the Saro cycle is an 18-year, 111.3-day period after which the Earth, Sun and Moon return to nearly the same relative positions and the cycle of lunar and solar eclipses begins again. And now for rapid fire, Dad Jokes Eclipse Edition. Why did the sun go to school? To get a little brighter before the next eclipse. Why don't eclipses trust anyone? Because they always find someone to throw shade. What did the sun say to the moon uh, during the eclipse? Don't worry, I'll be back in a light. Why did the astronomer break up with the eclipse? Because it kept leaving him in the dark. I feel like that wasn't maybe my best work. Don't call me. Don't come by my house. We're done. Ancient cultures often instilled eclipses with mythological or supernatural significance. Here are five examples of how ancient cultures interpreted eclipses. Let's start in ancient China. They believed that solar eclipses occurred when a celestial dragon devoured the sun. This myth prompted the tradition of banging drums and pots and making loud noises during an eclipse to scare the dragon away and restore sunlight. Bang! All you want, funny guy? I'm not going anywhere! In ancient Mesopotamian cultures, eclipses were seen as omens, often signalling the wrath of the gods or foretelling disaster. Priests conducted elaborate rituals to appease the gods and avert calamity. Maybe some research for you, Chris. Not sure your life can handle any more calamity. Not that hard, Scott. Tell him, Wash. It's incredibly hard. Hey, anything worth doing is. Vikings attributed solar eclipses to wolves chasing the sun. According to their mythology, when a wolf caught up to the sun and ate it, an eclipse would occur. Yes! Come on! In ancient Greece, eclipses were sometimes seen as indicators of divine displeasure, reflecting the gods' interventions in human affairs. In Chris's house, he can sense divine displeasure by the sound of slamming cupboards and doors. Well, that's it for this week's edition of Get Back. Please subscribe. Chris has no friends. It gives his uh, empty life purpose. One thing is for sure, regardless if Chris has his voice back for next week, 
I have a feeling I will never be seen or heard from again. Well, live by the sword, die by the sword, or in your case, Chris, a piece of donut wedged in your esophagus. Toodles!